Welcome to another Q&A. Uh, today's question is, Joe, what advice do you have for clients that are contacting us clearly more than ex more than is expected? This is a good question because obviously those of you who know me know that um, this is something I actually struggled a lot with, um, especially right at the beginning when I was creating my own um, services and packages and um, trying to um, navigate my way through um, creating my own business when um, I had predominantly been working for other people for the majority of my career um, for large companies most of the time and um, not monitoring my time well I was monitoring my time but it, um, someone else was kind of managing my time if that makes sense so um, I think the first thing to consider um, is um, always what is written in your contract so what have you um, agreed is going to be the contact time on this project and um, it always comes down to, um, well not always, but if you haven't specified how many hours or so, like uh, let's go back to, for example, if, you've, um, if you're working on like a, a very obvious um, packaged kind of project that is, has very clear defined boundaries and a start and an end, and this is what's required. It's very, you know, um, uh, a very clear structure so e-designs are typically like that which is a nice way um, you know uh, this is why I teach startups to you know obviously try uh, e-designs um, because uh, it's, it's a lot easier to keep boundaries with e-designs because um, you can say well this is what I've included um, this is how many revisions you've got and this is how many um, uh, hours post um, completion you can speak to me for um, or to make any changes or um, to discuss um, uh, what you're going to purchase or whatever. There's a million things we could talk about. But um, it's a little bit harder on a big project because um, sometimes you need to be um, uh, contacting the client and the client might need to be contacting you depending on um, what decision you're making. So if you're um, regularly meeting and having specific um, goal outcomes at the end of those meetings, you should be able to actually progress quite quickly and get decisions made, especially you know, if you've gone out of your way or your, your, your process and design communication is clear enough to help your client make a decision, which is really important because not everyone is very good at that or they don't know how to present information clear enough. To help a client make a make a good choice that they're confident with, and so they um and ah, and they go back and forth, and um, they're really confused, and you know, they'll say yes on the spot, but then call you later saying, "Oh, I'm not really sure about that anymore. Can you give us another option?" And this is where the problem starts because um, sometimes um, that is a legitimate, um, you know, um, worry. Or, um, you know, maybe you, you could go out of your way to clarify um, and help the client make a decision a little bit clearer. So um, uh, guiding them. Um, and, you know, they've come to you as a professional, so um, that's why they're calling you. They, they want your opinion. So um, it, it's, it's up to you to give them the answer um, that you're confident with and help them to make an answer that they're confident with or make a decision um, that they're confident with. What happens if they just want to chat? Um, they just keep changing their mind um, and they just want to like bash out some ideas with you. And this is where I had a lot of problems, especially at the beginning, because I'm chatty. Um, I love my clients and I could spend all day there. <laughs> and um, uh, I, I mean, I had one client specifically that I'm thinking of that um, I was still working at an architecture firm while I was um, taking on my first few clients and I um, every single day after work uh, my client would call me and on my you know hour and a half walk home I spoke to my client the whole way it was it was chatting but it was also tossing up ideas and I wasted weeks and weeks and weeks of my time um, just not really getting very far on the project I mean my client was happy because um, uh, he received a great service from me. But, um, you know, when I look back at the hours I spent really wasting my time, um, it was um, quite, quite depressing how much I would have actually made on that project. <laughs> so um, 
you know, what happens in that case? Well, again, you've got, you need to put some boundaries in place, but you also um, need to um, contain it. Well, you need to be the, strong enough to um, uh, uphold those boundaries. It also just or simply goes back to your contract. What have you agreed? What did you agree? Like, is this going to be a, a you know, a, a, an all tailored one-to-one -one service where I baby you the whole way? Or um, is, are you, is it a legitimate fee, right? So, or is it, um, you know, it's a big decision. We're about to spend a lot of money on this flooring, for example. Am I willing to spend 40000 on on flooring? Um, that wasn't the case in this particular client's case. It was, should I go for blue lights? Should I go for red lights? Um, you know, and it wouldn't have, you know, no one would have died. You know, you could have had both. They would have looked great in both colours. You know, it's not the end of the world. So um, I think in that case, it was more of a chat rather than... Um, uh, a legitimate reason to have a meeting and if you see it as a meeting rather than just a phone call I think you know in today's world especially post-covid world um, having a chat um, via dm via um, email via um, you know zoom it can be um, so informal that you're forgetting that you're actually this is your time that you're spending so um, limiting those um meetings to uh, very curated and structured uh, meetings can help you kind of resolve an issue um, and get to straight to the point especially if you've got an agenda for the meeting and then um, uh, you stick to the agenda so again i struggled with that so i'm getting better but um it was definitely something i um really wasn't very good at at the beginning um especially because um, I would do anything just to complete the project and make my client happy, obviously, um, because uh, I wanted a successful project um, and to have a completed project, um, uh, at, uh, especially at the beginning. So um, what if your client is a high touch client? So they just are very needy and need a lot of nurturing throughout the whole process. Again, um, this does go back to what you've agreed, but um, you might need to go and ask for more money if that's the kind of client that they are. Um, to say, uh, typically this would take me half as long um, because um, uh, my, my, uh, you know, when I provide a 3D visualization or um, uh, when, when someone sees it in place and I've uh, given the, um, the response that you've asked for, um, uh, we can move ahead and make a decision. Um, typically, it's one item that is really throwing things off. And um, this may not be the case uh, for you, but I have found it's typically, unless they can confirm one thing, they can't move on to the next. So if you can get them to nail down one thing and say, okay, no more changes, that's it. It's like, get it in writing, no more changes. We're not changing the flooring. We're just not, we're not, we're not changing the wall color and we're not changing the floor. And now we can move on and start picking furniture that, um, that is going to kind of tie this room together or give you the space that you're looking for. So try and take baby steps or try and confirm that one thing that can help you make bigger, um, broader decisions. And then when they can see it all come together, um, they'll be more confident, um, and will request less of your, less of your time, um, if you're upholding your boundaries and obviously you have your contracting place that states how um, uh, how the project is going to be run so hopefully that gives you um, a few different ways um, uh, to deal with um, clients that just want to call up for a chat you know obviously if it's a client that just keeps changing their mind you need to um, either give them a chance to do their own exploratory work. Um, and I've, been, I've done that. So um, I've stepped back from projects and said, how about you go and test some ideas? Um, especially, you know, um, some people just love designing and they want to do it themselves. They just don't have the capacity to. So um, uh, giving them the space to work things out on their own and then come back to you when they're ready is also an option. So just say, well, you know, obviously this is not what we've agreed um why don't you um like uh test some ideas out for yourself 
then come back to me once you've made a decision and so we can move forward once um, you've played around with this. You know, some people will hire you because they want to test ideas and that's okay, but just make sure that that's clear at the outset and what your contract is about and what, you, what your job role is because um, some people may um, not know that that's what they want, that they want a million options. Um, you know, and how you, do, how you provide uh, services um, in the first place can impact this. And um, I'll tell you a little secret. Uh, this is, well, not secret. This is how I work. And um, I found it was, it, it's, it really um, r removes a lot of um, shopping and changing um, so obviously my mentees all know this, um, but what I present typically, I will straight out of the bat always provide three options um, to any design scheme. And that's typically because um, from all of my experience working, um, if you provide one scheme, most people are never satisfied that, that you've really, really um, given them what they've asked for and thought of every option because they just want to know that they're making the absolute right decision, especially if they're uh, spending a lot of money. So for me, I like, I give them the option that they've asked for, which is what I'm obligated to do. Then I uh, provide um, something that pushes it a little bit more. So something maybe, something maybe that we've discussed in a meeting um, that they were open to, but we're like, oh, no, nah, I don't know if that would work, but you know it's a really great idea and you hope that they would consider it. So, um, or as you've been designing, you come up with an option and a, or an idea and you're like, this isn't what they've asked for, but I wish I could present it because it's a really great idea. Um, and obviously, um, you know, when I worked for firms, people or the designers would present their own option, um, not their own, well, one option, and it was their own option. And then the client would be quite upset because they're like, well, this is not what we asked for. Um, and the architect or designer was like, yeah, but it's better. And the client is like, well, I don't agree with you. It's not what we asked for. So can you redo it? And so they want you to change it. Um, and so obviously then my third option is, um, and this is how I start to design typically is I will do what I think um, they should do. And um, it just frees up your mind and helps you um, get the best out of the site, out of the, um, out of the, I mean, you don't even have to think about budget in this case, so you can really be free and open. Um, so obviously then the third option is obviously the Joe option. And um, what we find is typically um, we don't get, um, we, we end up from that, they'll pick and choose a little bit from every option and then we'll move forward with one option that they're really satisfied with. And I find that for me is a recipe that, um, uh, rarely um, uh, makes people change their mind afterwards because we've we've looked at most options um, or they've been satisfied that um, we've spent enough time um, thinking about um, the solutions to their specific problems or for their home or for their um, property. So that is a system that works for me um i know uh, there's a famous designer who only who um, says she provides two options um a really uh, the the option that she wants and then um uh, an ugly option <laughs> which i think i don't know if that's ethical but um i think it's you know funny to discuss but um uh you know that uh might uh prevent uh, people um, or your clients um, uh, the going down a particular path. So um, I don't know how it works in terms of um, changing your mind and, um, you know, uh, making changes down further down the line. Uh, but if you're in more control of the process, you could be a bit more, um, adamant to say that no no this is um the key to the design and we, we really cannot change it so um hopefully that helps um did i really answer the question what advice do you have for clients that are contacting us clearly more than is expected um 
so if yeah um if you feel that um uh it's more than you agreed i mean to have a think whether i mean there's always the client and there's always you have you been are you starting to feel resentful because um, the project is starting to cost more um, or take more of your time than you expected. But did you make a mistake at the pricing stage or did you make a mistake in the contract? Um, so is it 100% your client's fault? I would have a look at um, your level of communication. Have you been clear? Um, because it might not be the client every time. Um, you may um, need to take some responsibility in terms of... Um, uh, the service that you're providing it uh, may not all just be the client so um, you know sometimes it is uh, but sometimes it isn't so that would be my first thing to check and then speak to the client um, you know um, most of the time uh, uh, well in my case it's like 99% of the time um, I'm on really great terms with my clients so I can just say um, you know <laughs> Uh, I just, uh, this is not what we agreed. Um, do should we figure this something out? Um, do you need more? Do you need me to spend more time with you on this? Um, do we need to hold another meeting? How can we move this forward? And also giving them the option. They're like, they also don't want to waste your time. They want to make the most of their um, budget. So um, uh, working through the problem, uh, whatever it is, um, to move past it. It's obviously the best way um, for both you and your client to have a happy client at the end of it rather than just um, feeling resentful which is what I did at the beginning um, and just thinking oh, oh, I wish they'd stop contacting me <laughs> um, when you know it, it, maybe they're not in the wrong um, maybe you should take responsibility for some of the things um, that are going on